Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Spiritual Spotlight series. Today, I have the wonderful and fabulous Josephine Hardman, PhD. What I want to say about Josephine is that she is a certified intuitive healer and Akashic Records practitioner and teacher. She taught college for 10 years before transitioning to her spiritual work full time. Her purpose is to help people awaken the healer within, which I love that. That is amazing. The aspects of themselves as powerfully intuitive, wise, connected, and at peace. She does this through one-on-one -on -one work with her clients and teaching others how to access the Akashic Records through her comprehensive training programs. It's so lovely to meet you. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great. So excited to be here. So thank you. I'm so happy that you're here. So Tell us a little bit about, um, so you, you have a very comprehensive package. And I love the fact that you work with the Akashic Records. I also work with the Akashic Records mm -hmm. and I love the fact that you teach that. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey and kind of getting in touch with the Akashic Records. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a long story. You're like, okay, guys, let's buckle go. up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think I need to start with sort of my spiritual awakening absolutely yes please start there because that will lead us into how the records yeah. came into my life in the first place um and I would say in some ways this is kind of a common story I know so mm -hmm. many people relate to it in one way or another um and basically it's that I got sick so I got oh. sick in my very early 20s I was 19 oh. or 20 um and just started slowly getting sick and having like mysterious symptoms and I was in college at the time and it was like oh I can't yeah. use the computer anymore I'm so tired it's hard to go out and be in the world so hard function like, what, yeah what do yeah. I do with my life now um so I and I did the whole rounds you know doctor after doctor and conventional medicine and did the tests and they couldn't figure out what was wrong really so that it was really just a suspicion of probably some kind of autoimmune disorder mm -hmm. or this thing or the other thing maybe it's chronic fatigue you know it was just all really vague but what I heard the most from doctors was okay well we don't know and this is forever and you're not gonna heal and you need to take these steroids for the rest of your life like to keep the inflammation at bay and yeah which was really like a curse wow <laughs> you know, like, wow i have chills yeah and being you know 19 kind of years old, old. yeah yeah so you're just impressionable you're vulnerable you're scared and you're hearing these things so it was really difficult mm -hmm. um it was really devastating to be honest so and it was also a process of disillusionment with the conventional medical system mm -hmm. that they didn't have any better answers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for me that they were not going to fix anything or heal anything and that basically i had to turn to other places of right. information guidance some other way to heal myself um so that was really scary you know because i trusted doctors up until that point and i also don't want to say like i'm not making a general statement on conventional medicine no 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 this is your journey and oh, the yeah. fact that you went to that amount of doctors and base was like well good luck yeah it really was like that's, that and you know and it's sad i think so and there are great doctors yeah. out there and there are also doctors that sometimes treat us you know like we're one organ or one limb absolutely that's in a mm -hmm. fragmented way you have to see the other specialist mm -hmm. and it's like really no no, no i can't deal with your stomach you gotta yeah, go to gi right. no i can't deal with exactly. your heart you gotta go to cardio no i can't deal with your mind yeah. you gotta go to neuro yeah you're, yeah especially that right like i can't deal with your mind it's not about diet like right don't be stupid <laughs> um it's what i would hear when i would bring up these things so yeah it was like okay they're not going to fix me or heal me or there's not a savior outside of myself that's gonna yeah. come in and take all of this away or make it better right mm -hmm. so i realized that and then i i turned to other forms of medicine so i started you know very gently with energy healing right oh, wow so i saw reiki healers and then I learned how to do Reiki on myself. Um, nice. Then I did the whole course in miracles, which is a 365 day. I'm doing that right now in my group. It's intense. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's life changing. It is. Um, 
<laughs> so I did the Course in Miracles. I did, you know, talk therapy. I did a lot of things. I did acupuncture. I did a lot of things. And luckily, I was supported by my family, especially mm -hmm. my parents, because wow. my parents are very spiritual. My mom is a psychotherapist, but also a healer. Um, my dad is like, like a lifelong meditator, mm -hmm. he's done mindfulness meditation. So they um, had a lot of resources that they could direct me to, yeah. which was really very, very lucky to have mm -hmm. that. And it was in that process of dis discovering these new modalities that eventually, so I came across the Akashic Records. Wow. It was actually my mom that said, oh, I learned about this tool. I love it. Yeah. Um, what do you think about looking into that too? Yeah. So I did, and that was really, really transformative. Yes. So the records helped me in a lot of different ways, particularly to come face to face with a lot of the patterns mm. and just dysfunctional behaviors and thought patterns that were basically fueling the illness and you know I see illness really as just a state of imbalance yes. somewhere in the physical and energetic system and it really for me it really does start at the energetic level and then yeah. you know the physical manifestations are kind of the last absolutely like, where things mm -hmm. show up um so with the help of the records I was able to see oh okay I have this perfectionist pattern I have this pattern of not being able to say no because I'm a people pleaser. <laughs> um, I'm seeking approval from all these places outside of myself in this compulsive way. Um, I have a very intense type A personality tendencies. So I'm rushing and I'm not pacing myself. So mm -hmm. I had to confront all of that and then start to work through it and kind of unravel it. And the records also helped me shift my mindset and the Course in Miracles also helped with that mm -hmm. of, you know, okay, so I have internalized, I have bought into this belief system that the doctors were giving me of this is forever, there's yeah. no cure, you're never going to heal, it's going to get worse over time, which I had really internalized and then I was living by those beliefs. Absolutely. This self-fulfilling prophecy and cycle. So it was just one day of amazing clarity all of a sudden it was like a flash of clarity like oh that is not that is not mine like that belief system doesn't have to be mine I don't have to live by it I don't have to believe it what if I just take my mind and my thoughts into a different place or just open things up like what could be possible right here and that was just like this sense of internal freedom of mm -hmm. why wow, I have to be held hostage by this belief system. So it was like the shackles of the mind opening up, right? Just all these possibilities coming forth. Um, and so, yeah, it really was the Akashic Records that helped so much with that. And they've been in my life ever since. I love that. And I love the fact that you bring up such valid points about your thoughts create your reality. And the loops, the loops that we play in our minds. And, and I love the fact that you go into the Akashic Records because I imagine that you rewrite those loops. Mm. You help you help your clients to say, okay, let's identify this. Let's work with it. And now let's move, let's release it and move on. Completely. Yeah. Yes. So much of that, I think, of working with the records is about, I almost look at it as taking off all of these heavy coats that we've put on ourselves of conditioning, of programming, of other people's ideas and beliefs and opinions and what they expect from us mm -hmm. and what the culture says is possible versus what's not possible. Yeah. So just all of that layering that happens that gets accumulated and not even just from this lifetime, but past lifetimes. Absolutely. Because you have well. records to go into the past. Absolutely. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We're still yeah. carrying that until we become conscious of it. So it's really about taking off all of those heavy mm -hmm. coats that we don't need anymore and that are keeping that are covering up really our core essential self, mm -hmm. our true self within and that light that wants to shine so brightly of who we really are and what really matters to us at our highest, deepest levels so yeah just peeling back all of that stuff and becoming truly ourselves so important 
I love that. And it sounds like now I would say with your journey, are you healed now from those ailments that you had when you were 19 years old? Oh yeah. I mean, I would say I am 90% love it. free yeah. from the things that I had then, which is like absolute proof that of course you can heal. There is a cure if we want to put it in those right. terms. Um, and that conventional medicine is not always the path that's going to yeah. get us there, but that's yeah. okay. You know, 100%, like, and like, I, I'm a registered nurse, and I truly believe in, you know, yeah, Western, Eastern medicine and whatnot, but do I feel that in a nation right now, we overprescribe and we overdiagnose and we oversimplify complex things with, you know, as a doctor, because it's like an assembly line. Yeah, I 100% agree with you, and I do feel, and maybe you see this too, is like, we're kind of shifting as a mm -hmm. culture to look within rather than just say, you know, go to the doctor and say, well, what's wrong with me? And they're like, well, I don't know. And, you know, you probably teach people, no, let's go within, let's identify what's causing this dis-ease. Cause like you said, like, I firmly believe illnesses and whatever, it comes from our thoughts, our patterns, our loops. And we kind of manifest those into physical symptoms, such as a rash, fatigue, anxiety, you know, all of that. Cause we get so compacted with all of these belief systems. And I love that analogy of it's heavy coats mm -hmm. it's weighing you down. Oh, I just, that's so powerful. And I love yeah. the fact that you've been able to, you identify that. Thank goodness you had supportive parents and this, you know, cause a lot of people don't have that, you know, when they're looking within and then like for you to be like, no, I can, I can cure myself. I mean, absolutely. We're just a, we can, we can do anything if yeah. we, harness the power within <laughs> yes but that's the thing that's the critical i think there's some kind of paradigm shift sure. that's mm -hmm. happening now of okay we're not going to give our power away yeah. anymore to whatever system mm -hmm. or whatever person or even to a thought pattern uh, or to the news right to the oh media. gosh the news um, oh. yeah. and <laughs> just turn back into ourselves yeah. because we really do have i believe we do have the answers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. within and that so sometimes when i talk about the akashic records especially with my students right when i'm yeah. training them how to access the records right. themselves and i see it actually as that there is no separation between us and the records i agree in some ways we are the records and the records mm -hmm. are within us because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's all part of the same whole um, so it's really just about that remembering that there is no separation and that in connecting to those highest aspects of ourselves, which is what the records can enable, um, that's when we find that clarity and those flashes of insight um, and just the path ahead becomes so much clearer. And then we're just relying on that inner guidance and that inner compass, you know, yes. what is aligned with us. And I think with what you said uh, a minute ago is that, yes, people are definitely taking back the power within, mm -hmm. but I would imagine that you help your clients to reclaim the power that was lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's such a big part of the work. And it's, you know, because as I said, I, this is all, also has to do with just the way that I see my role as a healer. Yeah. Because I don't have i don't have all of the answers i don't have all of the authority i don't have i don't want to be the oracle or telling people <laughs> what they should be doing and so it's really just about being like a guide or a companion yes. for a while being a mirror and then helping people to activate that healer mm -hmm. within, within. that intuitive it. part within so that they have access to those mm -hmm. answers and then we can start identifying oh where are the places where you're giving your power Absolutely. away why are you giving your power away to this pattern or to this behavior or to this person when mm -hmm. you interact with them and how can you start to pull all of your energy back into yourself and just to be mindful of that mm -hmm. you know boundaries are involved with that energy management um just being mindful of our triggers and how to soften them so there's a lot of inner work that goes into that. But yeah, just first of all, becoming aware of where are the places where I'm giving my power away. 
And I like the fact that you say that you're, you know, you're a guide. It's almost like you're providing them with the training wheels and ultimately they're going to have to ride the bike themselves. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I don't want anyone ever to think that they need me to access the Akashic records. Yeah. And of course it is a joyful, collaborative, powerful experience to work Absolutely. with someone and to go into the records together. Mm -hmm. But ultimately I'm, just serving as a mediator for a little while. But what I want them to do is to be able to access the, the records for themselves or any other form of guidance. Yeah, because you do you're you you also kind of help them to sharpen their intuitive abilities, which is a superpower. Exactly. Yes, that's it. Because it doesn't just have to be the records. It could be, you know, any other form of divine source that they feel connected to exactly. or that resonates with them that they can access that themselves and they don't need me for that so sometimes I say if I'm doing my job really well then I'm working myself out of a job because then people don't need to see me anymore which is good it <laughs> is good it also means you're being authentic like because you're honoring the fact that they have divine within them just as you have divine within you yeah. and you know and in and I hate to say this, and, and it's, there are inauthentic people out there that will try to take advantage of those who may not be as clear minded, you know, such as yourself. And you're no, you're like, no, I'm going to help you. And I'm going to help you to take back your power and activate the healer within because we're all healers within. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I, yeah, I really do hope that I, I strive to always be in that in integrity yeah. with myself in that way through my business and the work that I do. Um, and I think that's another way that we're taking our power back is by not giving our power away to yes. a healer or to a mm -hmm. teacher or to a mentor or even mm -hmm. to the records themselves, right? Ooh, yeah. I don't want to feed into any of those codependent patterns or, oh. or neediness or I need any of these people or tools to heal myself because that is not true. All of that can be helpful to have allies on the path, but ultimately we're the ones doing it. So Ooh, you're speaking it. Yeah. <laughs> I have chills. No, that's just, I mean, wow. <laughs> like, because you're right. Like we, we, we can become codependent on, yes. Wow. That's, oh my goodness. <laughs> no, well, that's what happens, but you know, with spiritual bypassing, oh, like, yes. oh, I'm gonna use this crystal and un unless I use it then I can't heal or I need yes. a tarot deck to tell me this or that so I can make a choice but these things are just neutral tools we can't right. make the tool the thing that's going to heal us because that is not really the case it's just that the tool helps us to activate something within ourselves right. that's already there and I feel like with the spiritual tools you're also teaching them discernment yeah yeah kind yeah. of like you said trusting the guidance within like I'm not going to pick up my pendulum every time I want to buy, you know, something online. Is this yes. in my best and highest good? Like I need to trust my own intuitive guidance. <laughs> Completely. Yes. But you know what? It is challenging to do that because then we have to take ownership yes. of the choices that we're making. And we can't say, oh, the tarot deck told me to do that. <laughs> like, the tarot deck can help us to get more information. Yeah a choice that we're trying to make but then ultimately we have to make the choice ourselves and then live with the consequences of you, it i right? just had a thought in mind and i'd already lost it oh my goodness but it was so oh people who say oh. well spirit told me come on come right. on spirit, I, come on <laughs> yeah i know because in so many ways this is your own you're telling me your intuition yeah right exactly so it's just about be, then being mindful of that too that we don't want to use spirituality to try to escape reality or to give away that ownership over our own lives and choices because I, I would imagine that you also feel like you know you're a spiritual person but having a human experience and oh. as humans, we have to make choices for our best and highest good, but we also have to live within society and <laughs> yes, and that's the, it's so important that you're saying that, because the other way that I have seen people sometimes do spiritual bypassing when working with the records specifically mm. is, you know, because when you start accessing the records and spending more time there. It always feels so good. It feels so welcoming. Yeah. The energy is such a high frequency, high level energy. 
there's no judgment inside of the records it's just this pure love and it feels really good to be there and sometimes I see people almost like using them but like leaving their bodies behind to mm. go up into the spiritual realms mm. so I think it's so important that we keep that anchoring in the body into the mm. earth that we do grounding practices and that we always go into the records or do any other spiritual practice with the with the intention of whatever I discover here, whatever I find, whatever the information is, I'm going to bring it down to earth and I'm going to apply it in some way, or I'm going to ask, how is this illuminating mm. where I am today and where I want to be moving forward um, so that we make it a more active process. Like we have to be active participants. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I, and you're, you're so correct about, you have to stay grounded to to earth you have to stay grounded you know like people do spend a lot of time off in the ethers and you're like yes. oh you gotta you're not gonna be bringing in what you want <laughs> right I know that is that whole thing right of like to be able to manifest it's exactly. not just the vision board and the meditating although right. those are really important parts of it but it's also okay what real actions am I taking in I my know. life what inner work am I doing to move mm-hmm. this forward? Um, right. Because we are ultimately responsible for that. So. Absolutely. so one of the things that you do is that you are on Instagram and you are fabulous on Instagram. So oh, the first thing, you. what is your Instagram handle so everybody can follow you? Yep. So that is at healer.josephine. Oh, I love it. And what I've noticed that you do is that you do these like tarot challenges mm-hmm. a lot. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, so I've been doing the tarot challenges probably for about three years oh. now, and they're every month, so they're monthly. Monthly, okay. I call them month-long journeys of healing and transformation and self-exploration. Basically, this is what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way I design them is that I will open the records, you know, a month in advance. I'll okay. open the records and then just ask kind of what is an important theme. Um, or what do people need the most help with? Or what can we work on healing for next month? And then I just listen and see what the answer is. So it's pretty, it's a pretty good business strategy. I, I'm like, I'm taking it. notes. Like, guys, yeah. buckle up. <laughs> right. I love so that. I do that. And then I get the theme, right? So for example, yeah. this current month, which is April 2022, we're doing um, the inner teenager Yes. One hour challenge, which is like a variation on the on inner child healing, mm-hmm. but dealing with the inner team. I love that. And then next month, which I announced yesterday, we're doing um befriending my emotions. Oh. So it's about, you know, what is your current emotional state? How are you relating to some primary emotions like anger, grief, sadness, mm-hmm. joy? And also how can you become a compassionate host? Ooh. host? for all of the emotions that are living inside of you in any one given moment without rejecting them, but also without overly attaching to them. So just to bring more peace to how we're dealing with our emotions. So that will be May, 2020. Oh, I love that. Oh, it's so powerful. Now, um, and I, and I think with your tarot challenges, do you have to use any specific tarot deck or is it whatever deck you have? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so first of all, it's every other day. So we every day? post on odd days of the month. So one, three, five, and so on. Um, because I've found that just makes it easier for people to mm-hmm. stay on track with, and it's not too overwhelming. Um, and people can use any tarot deck or oracle deck. Sometimes people use runes. Um, sometimes people just do them privately if yeah. they don't want to post publicly. So just journaling or just even using the prompts for self-reflection. So really any way that works. Oh, that's people, perfect. Whatever resonates. Yeah. Now, what other things, what other challenges do you do on Instagram? Do you do just so, the tarot ones or your other ones? I feel like you do other ones. I do the tarot challenges, which are really like the primary thing. But mm-hmm. then I also post um, tarot spreads with Ooh. different themes throughout the month. Um, and sometimes I will also just throw out like daily prompts. Mm-hmm. Um for the days where we're not posting for the main challenge, um, just to help people to continue that self exploration, really with whatever theme mm-hmm. we're dealing with that month. I, 
I love the fact that you, you do uh, a theme every month. Like, and it, like you said, if maybe that theme doesn't resonate with you this month, maybe the next month's theme, oh, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, I always hear from people, like even let's say a challenge that I did a, a year ago. And oh, wow. Like, oh, I'm finally getting around to it. <laughs> now it really applies to what's going on in my life. So it's nice that all of the challenges are forever yeah. there in my account. And you can do anyone that resonates. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the one for that month. So no, no, it's perfect. And, and I also like the fact that you're not like, well, you have to use this exact tag and this oh, exact. No, 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 you know, no, no. Perfect. Never that. no, yeah, whatever tool works. Yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. What can you tell us a little bit about your Akashic Records course? Yeah, absolutely. So I have an Akashic Records level one course, which is self-paced. Okay. Um, and that one is basically all of the foundational pieces. Nice. And everything people need to know to be able to access and work with the records for themselves. So okay. for personal healing and transformation. Um, so we go into how do you receive information mm -hmm. from the records? What are the different intuitive channels that we need to open up? How do you get ego mind interference <laughs> out of the way so that you're getting really clear, accurate, yeah. useful information? Um, how do you connect with the record keepers who are the beings of light that work inside of the records? So that and a lot more. Um, and then I also have my certification program. Okay. Is um, all levels of mastery in the Akashic Records. Nice. And that was geared for people that want to become certified practitioners. Oh. Um, and then when you become a certified practitioner, are you able then to do um, readings on clients? Exactly. Yeah. Ooh, so typically it. for the certification, I get um, people who already have spiritual businesses, healers, coaches, and they want to add the records as another modality or even as an overarching mm -hmm. modality. That, and then they can use all of their other tools, but having the records open, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. I find that, um, and I'm sure with you, when you, cause you started with like Reiki and, you know, mindfulness work, do, having that kind of foundation before you got into the Akashic records made go into the records that much more powerful. Oh yeah. And, and easier, right? Yes. <laughs> I already had practice in kind of sitting in stillness and silence mm -hmm. and being able to tune into something. Yeah, which I think is really the bulk of the initial work that we need to do to clear ourselves out and just be able to get into the frequency mm -hmm. of the records. So absolutely. And when I have students who are already experienced meditators, it tends to facilitate that process for sure, which is not to say that people who haven't done meditation. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They still can, but there might be a little bit more of just clearing stuff out and opening yeah. the little channels at first. Yeah, you know, when I started with my kind of spiritual journey, I actually started with energy healing myself. And uh, I, I yeah, and then I kind of became more with that. And then I went into Akashic Records, but I found that I was channeling more energy than I was, um, you know what I mean? So yeah. I had to take another yes. <laughs> Akashic Records course so I can learn the energies I'm channeling through the Akashic Records. <laughs> oh, that's amazing though. And you know what, that, that's such a good point though, because we receive information in all kinds of different ways. Yes. Sometimes it comes through as a feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Or a sensation yes. or like a sound that you're hearing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can hear the high frequency of the records through clear audience. So it doesn't always have to be this visual, you know, like a perfect movie or a scene of something. Mm -hmm. It can be all these other ways that it's coming through. No, to be transparent, I'm, I'm glad that you bring that point up is that I really don't see. I just get like a flash. That's pretty much it. And then it just pops in my head and right. then I feel it. And then, but for me, you know, you're like, you, I, I feel it initially. So I'm like, oh, okay. So Archangel Michael is here and I can feel it through your sacral chakra and yeah you know, and then let's go. <laughs> yes, that I can relate to that so much. Because even for me, when I am receiving past life, mm. information, let's say with a client that we're working yeah. for, and sometimes I'm not seeing it as a scene of the past life. Right. Sometimes I am, but sometimes I'm just receiving a feeling like this was a dominant primary emotion. Mm. 
yeah. in that past life, let, let's say something like loneliness, mm -hmm, let's say mm -hmm. was a dominant emotion in that particular mm -hmm. past life. And there is a trauma related to it that we need to address. So I might just feel it as a feeling or just get a sense of what the dominant key word is for that right. past life. So yeah, I just, I really want people to know, first of all, you don't have to be psychic. No, not at all. The records, mm -hmm. And you don't need to be someone who's always seeing mm -hmm. things because there are so many other avenues of information. Do you, do you call yourself a psychic? No, yes. I do not think yeah. that I am because I don't, you know, sometimes in sessions I will yeah. have loved ones coming through right. if there's an important message, mm -hmm. which is kind of rare for me, but it does happen. Um, but beyond that, I don't, I don't consider myself a medium or a psychic and cause I don't want to make those promises either, you know? Right. So, yeah. And then with the, um, so sorry, I'm bringing up a question about the Akashic records. Um, oh, I love it. Yeah. I can talk about the records all day. Every day. I know. Same. I'm like, oh, yeah. records. And, 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 I mean, the same for, for me, I kind of feel like, like, you know, I go into the records and yeah, I'm intuitive, but I have a hard time calling myself a psychic. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't want to let's talk about your past and what's going on that's impacting your present so that way you can work on your future. Yep. You yeah. Know? Right. That, so that you can work on your future because right. it's not already written. Exactly. Right? We're not, pretty well. <laughs> yes. So I always like to say the records are not a predictive tool. Mm -hmm. They're not a fortune telling tool. Although we can take a look at let's say, you know, someone is wondering, well, if I make this choice today, let's say like right. um, changing careers or moving across the country or getting mm -hmm. married, we can go into the records and look at, okay, if you make that choice today and you stay on that trajectory, what is the potential future right. energy of that or outcome of mm -hmm. that? But it's not really that we're reading the future because we're, I think we're creating that as we go. I 100% agree with you. And I okay. do feel that Sometimes when we're given information from a reading, we may then change and pivot and now we've rewritten exactly what you're looking for. <laughs> Completely. Yes. And we go back into the past life and heal the past life trauma, right. which effectively changes the present and the future as well. Right. So, yeah. It's all, you know, and time is not linear in the records. So mm. it's all happening simultaneously. And we're always changing the future when we go and do healing work or repair work inside of the records. So do you feel like the Akashic records are in a different dimension or do you feel like they're within the same dimension? Yeah, that's such a great question. And, you know, I, I don't know why, but in this last year, I've had people ask me, aren't the records a tool of the third dimension? Oh, I didn't, I've never heard that. Yeah, which surprised me. I was like, uh, what, what? <laughs> I know. And because I don't know who's out there saying that. But that's so odd. I know. So people are asking me that and saying, aren't we like staying stuck in the third dimension if we use them as a tool, which is really like the opposite way of how I look. At it. Yeah. Right. Because we as humans are in the third right. dimension. I tend to think of the records as they're in the fifth dimension or higher. Right. I right. Right. That almost like that they're stretching down yes. so that we can merge with yeah. them, which is, but that they can come as far down as the fifth. Mm -hmm. dimension and that that's where we need to do the work of yeah. ascending mm -hmm. if you will and aligning with that frequency which is why I also think it's not really possible or not ideal to mm -hmm. try to access the records in a state of crisis or emotional Ooh, evil very good point or if we're really frustrated about something or really yeah. scared about something mm -hmm. I think it just causes more interference and we're not going to receive clear information because all of that's like that. getting in the way. Um, so I think we need to be really clear, centered, mm. peaceful so that we can match that higher frequency. So I, yeah, I don't know where that idea has, has come from, but I see them as ultimately that the records are coming down, you know, from divine source itself. Yes. So the highest place that there could ever mm -hmm. be. And then as far down as the fifth. That's Did so it, interesting. That makes sense. That's how I absolutely no 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 one hundred percent. So I um so like I said I I also am a Akashic Records practitioner and I've been certified in it. But um I've learned probably eight different ways to go into the records. 
Right. Because I'm always like, oh, what's a different way? What's a different way? And a recent book that I'm reading, oh, and I did get that book that you recommended. See, guys, when you oh. follow her on Instagram, is it what is Oh, did you get the Irvin Laszlo book? Yes, I haven't started oh, yet, but oh, I was like, if she's okay. recommending it, I'm getting it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh. And, um, but anyway, <clears throat> sorry, I got all excited. Yeah. I'm reading this new book and this girl, her name's Maureen, Maureen St. Germain, and I may be pronouncing it incorrectly. Okay. She yeah. talks about the records are in the 11th dimension. I so see. I'm like, but I've never heard them in the third dimension. That's interesting. Because that that's our 3D self. And this is a multi-dimension. I'm sorry, off topic. No, I know. I don't, I'm not sure if Where there's that even come from? someone out there like saying, you know, sometimes people also say, well, the tarot deck is evil. Oh, don't use it. Yes. It's third dimension. So I don't know if they were just lumping in the records. That kind of makes so sense. That, Another tool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, that's mean, interesting. That feels yeah, it feels like a misunderstanding of what, what they really are. Mm -hmm. So, And I do agree with your point of, you know, make sure that when you do go into the records, you're clear-minded. And also, when you're setting your intention, when you open mm -hmm. up the records to get your clear and accurate information, mm -hmm. that you're not, you know, because if you ask the question, well, I win the lottery. <laughs> it's <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, uh, that's such an important part of my level one course Perfect. how to phrase productive questions that Love actually it. work with the records yeah because for example we can't ask should or shouldn't questions right that's not because again we're giving our power away to the records right. and they're never going to allow this to happen mm -hmm. um they're never going to allow us to do that so if we're going in asking should i take this job most likely we're not going to get anything or it's just going to be more confusing. well if you want to exactly right <laughs> what do you want to create for yourself you choose um so yeah phrasing questions in the most precise illuminating way to mm -hmm. unlock that clear information is really such an important part of the process I love that I love that so much so one of the things that Josephine does offer is that she actually has a guide, a free introductory guide um, that I will make sure to post when I post this interview um, that everybody can access that free guide. Before we wrap up the interview, is there anything in which you want to impart on the listeners, any advice, anything like that, anything you want to share, anything you have upcoming, any classes? <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> So first of all, I do think that I have in the works and it feels like I'm just being called to do this, mm -hmm. but um, pretty soon I'm going to be offering some type of membership. Ooh, program, you know I how love we that. Talked about, um, we talked about the monthly tarot challenges. I am thinking. Yeah. And every month, you know, that there's a specific theme. Mm. So I am being led to create some kind of more comprehensive container for that, that. For healing work on a specific theme every month, but mm -hmm. you know, in a small group setting uh -huh. um, where people would have much more access to me. Mm -hmm. And so that we can work through things like inner child healing or shadow work or yes. how to connect with your guides more mm -hmm. powerfully just with monthly themes. So that, that is an amazing idea and so yeah. needed. Yes. Yeah, I'm excited to offer. Yeah. So that will be coming up soon. Um, will that be on Facebook or would that be on, like, what site would that be on? Yeah, I will probably do that, um, like a membership site on Teachable, okay. which is oh, where perfect. I have my current okay. course. Yeah, so perfect. just part of that, um, just because I'm not a fan of Facebook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I get how it's useful for a lot of things. I love it. Um, <laughs> so that's something that's coming up and then what would I like to impart I think just again to emphasize this point of there's really no one outside of ourselves that mm. can fix heal make everything better be our savior but ultimately that doesn't have to be a bad thing right because it's just about remembering that we can go within to mm. find that guidance and that inner power yeah. to activate our inner compass. I do think we all come in with this internal system of guidance that is super sharp and clear and it's never been lost. Yes. Even if we covered it up for a while, for whatever reason, um, and that can always be reclaimed. 
Um, so just for people to remember that and that they have access to all of these really high sources of information and healing and wisdom. And yeah, that is not an exclusive thing. Absolutely. It's not, oh, well, if she can do it, doesn't mean you can't do it yourself. Exactly. And you don't have to be special in any way. It's just about doing a little bit of work and practice and anyone can get there. I would say if anything, it's just a willingness to be open and look within yourself. That's it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Love oh, I that. love it so much. And what is the best way for somebody to, if they want to book a session with you? Do you do one-on-one sessions? Yeah, I am still doing um, nice. a couple of record healing sessions. Awesome. Um, so the best way to take a look at that and connect with me is to go to my website, uh, which is josephinehartman.com. And we've already mentioned the Instagram and I yeah. also have a podcast. Oh, awesome. Uh, Tell us all about your podcast. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so now I've had the podcast for six years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it's been a long time. Um, and it's called Inner Work. A sort of growth podcast yeah. it's most platforms and I do interviews nice with other healers mm-hmm. and leaders in the spiritual community and nice. I also do solo episodes um yes yeah, so people can check that out on any platform that they use for podcasts and one more time what was the name of it it's inner work a spiritual oh, I love that Thank you. It's a good name. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I, again, anything for my business, I just open the records and say, what should that, what do I make the name of the podcast? What's most you, alive? And I love I, you oh. so much because it's so funny. I have been developing this course for a while now and I named it. And, and when I went into the records, they're like, nope, mm-mm, that oh. name, nope, that is low yeah. five. Right. Nope. <laughs> yeah sometimes you want to go one way right in your human self and then they're like nope this other way and we just have to surrender to that I think. you're like no and I'm like what I yeah right <laughs> yeah they can be annoying sometimes <laughs> I know in a, good way. <sighs> in a yeah. good way in a good way but you're yeah. like come on man I know which I is know. why you have the inner ten- teenager challenge, everyone. <laughs> that's it, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yes. I love it. Oh. Well, once again, I want to thank you so, so, so much for um, joining me here today for the Spiritual Spotlight series. I look forward to hearing from you again. I will make sure to post all every single way that everyone can get in touch with you. And I hope everybody has a great day and everyone take care. Thank you so much.